Example, we will discuss uh, example of modeling level 1 of transfer phenomena um, where in this particular example uh, it's a problem of heat removal from a bath of hot solvent by immersing a steel rod into the bath and allowing the heat to dissipate from the hot solvent bath through the rod and then to the atmosphere. Imagine you have a glass of hot coffee and uh, hot coffee has a temperature of T1 and uh, the surrounding air has a temperature of T0 so uh, the heat transfer will occur from the hot coffee to the rod and then this rod let's say we assume that this rod has a uniform temperature of T from the bottom to the top from the bottom up to the top of the rod then um, the other heat transport will be from the rod to the surrounding atmosphere so uh, looking at these configurations in here then uh, for the level 1 problem we take several assumptions the first assumption is that the rod temperature is uniform and it's defined as T it is defined as T and then the second one is that we ignore the heat transfer at the two flat ends of the rod so if I put it in here that means we ignore this area in here and then we only focus on the area um, on the surrounding on the only on the cylindrical surface area where the there is a heat transfer between the solvent to the rod and then the rod to the air the third assumptions will be the overall heat transfer coefficients are known and constant so we have to overall heat transfer coefficients one is um, HL so this one is describing the heat transport coefficients from the liquid phase to the rod the other one is the heat transfer coefficients in the gas phase so we have HL is in the liquid and then HG is on the gas phase okay there there is need to be another assumptions to solve this problem so the the fourth one will be no solvent evaporate So, uh, by the meaning of this no solvent evaporate, meaning that uh, uh, we we define in here a two length of the the length of the the volume will be constant. So there will be L one will be constant, and L two will be constant, because there is it doesn't change with time. So how do we solve the problem in here? So by looking at the at this then we know that uh, with the assumptions then we can go and start with the steady state heat balance in here in this particular problem the simplest problem we don't we will not have an accumulation of the heat by the rod so we can have a steady a steady state heat balance on the rod 
and in here what is important is that we state that there is no accumulation of heat in the rod and then another thing that is important is that uh, basically we need to to understand that the the volume elements in here are finite so it's not a differential volume element so it means that the volume above the liquid will be having a length of l2 and then the volume below the liquid interface will have a length of l1 so this one will be l1 this one is l2 um, remember that the temperature of the rod is uniform so now let's make the heat balance in minus out will be equal to accumulation so again we inspect again the, the the system is in here remember that the heat transport will go from the high temperature to the low temperature t1 is higher than t and it will be higher than T0. So the heat transport will be from the hot solvent bed to the rod and then from the rod to the atmosphere. So then uh, we we uh, we care about the first heat transport terms in here. So the overall heat transport coefficients in the liquid phase multiplied by the surface area where there is a contact between the liquid and the rod which is essentially the, the cylindrical surface area of the rod multiplied by T1 minus T so in here T1 is higher than T okay and then the, there will be a second heat transport from the rod to the atmosphere so the second one will be Hg multiplied by the surface area of the rod that is exposed to the air multiplied by the temperature difference so in here the temperature of the rod minus the temperature of the surrounding air and then as we said before there is no accumulations okay um, in here always recheck the unit because we want to make sure that everything is is correct so the the unit for the hl will be joule per second meter square kelvin and then you multiply by this term in here which has a, a unit of area and then this this particular temperature difference will have a unit of k so you can basically cross this cross this cross this cross this so you have a unit of joule per second and then we continue again simplifying so this will be hl multiplied by 2 pi r L1 T1 minus HL 2 pi R L1 T minus HG 2 pi R L2 T plus HG 2 pi R L2 T naught is equal 0. Um, exchanging the keep on doing the step to pi r l l1 t1 plus hg to pi r l2 t naught is equal hl to pi r l1 t plus hg to pi r L to T is equal 0. Then uh, we can put 2 pi R uh, in front of the bracket. HL L1 T1 plus HG L2 T0 is equal 2 pi R multiplied by HL L1 plus HG L2 multiplied by t 
so now after this we uh, we basically can get uh, the expressions for the temperature uh, of the rod as a function of the temperature of the hot solvent and the temperature of the surrounding air so this one will be hl l1 plus hgl2 okay um, so now if you go back again into your into the um, the picture of your systems you basically get this t in here as a function of the t naught t1 hg l2 l1 and hl then um, we can also do uh, we can we can also define this t as an um, by divide the nominator and the denominator by HGL2 so meaning the nominator is this term in here all of this this is called nom nominator this term in here is all called the denominator if we divide the nominator and the denominator then we can get our t is equal hl l1 divided by hg l2 t1 plus t0 divided by hl l1 divided by hg l2 plus 1 okay and if we define um, another term called alpha alpha in here is defined as the l hl l1 will divided by h gl2 then this t in here can also be expressed in terms of the alpha plus one Okay, so far we have covered the expressions for the temperature as uh, functions of the T0 and T1. Then we can proceed to, to go into the next um, variable of interest. The other variable of interest will be the heat transfer rate. So the heat transfer rate in here is defined as the the heat transfer transfer quantity that um, was transferred from the hot solvent into the rod uh, or equivalently from the rod into the surrounding air so they should be the same because there is no accumulation and everything is on the steady state so that will be hl multiplied by 2 pi rl1 t uh, Multiplied by the T1 minus T. This should be equal to the Hg multiplied by 2 pi R L2 T minus T naught. Okay, then um, here we substitute the expressions of the T. Let's try with the first term first. Oh, so we, we try with the first um term in here okay um the second one should give you the the same expressions as as you can prove by yourself later on t1 is equal minus hl l1 t1 plus hg l2 t0 divided by hl l1 plus hg l2 Now we continue again. HL 2 pi R L1. Then the first thing in here we can convert it uh, accordingly. So this will be T1 multiplied by H HL L1 plus HG 
L2 minus H L L1 T1 minus HG L2 T0 okay um, HL L1 plus HG L2 then continuing the derivations okay so this one will be this uh, HL L1 plus HG L2 this one will be H L L1 T1 plus HG L2 T1 minus HL L1 T1 minus H G L2 T not not in here that uh, we have the same term in here which is the first one and the third one so we can basically uh, cancel them okay and then we can simplify further again so this will be equal to 2 pi r l1 hl hg l2 t1 minus t not is equal to hl l1 plus hg l2 now um, you can basically lump all the the term in here hl hg l1 l2 t1 minus t0 divided by hl l1 plus hg l2 or this can also be expressed as 2 pi r t1 minus t0 divided by hl l1 plus hg l2 divided by hl hg sorry i make a mistake in here i need to erase this one this one will be l1 l2 then this can be expressed in terms of this 1 over h g l2 plus 1 h l l1 2 pi r t1 minus t0 then this basically give us the the heat transfer rate expression and uh, you can also go by yourself and check you can go by yourself and check whether this second expression in here should give you the same result it should give you the same result it should give you this expressions in here and also this expression if not then something is wrong with your derivations um this q can also be uh, express in terms of a different a slightly different variable so let's go back into this term in here t1 minus t0 okay so this one will be hl l1 plus hg l2 then this can be expressed as 2 pi r hg l2 t1 minus t0 divided by 1 plus h g l2 divided by h l l1 or alternatively we can also put it like this 2 pi r hg l2 t1 minus t0 divided by 1 divided by 1 over hl l1 divided by hg l2 and previously we have uh, showed you the definitions of uh, alpha so this one k 
can be expressed in terms of the alpha because alpha as we show on top in here alpha is defined as hl l1 divided by hgl2 then um, why we bother to express this q in terms of the alpha so there is a reason because in here if we if if we uh, if we think further this if this alpha is very 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 higher than 1 then um, essentially our one uh, uh, one over alpha will be equal to 0 okay so if we connect it with the physical significance of this so when alpha is equal to hll1 divided by hg l2 is very large then the q the expression for q can be simplified so as you can see in here if this up one one uh, divided by alpha becomes zero then your q will basically translate to q is equal to pi r hg l2 t1 minus t0 here basically it says that uh, your heat transfer is controlled by the segment of the rod exposed to the atmosphere because it's only depending on the hg and l2 so um another variable other variables like hl and l1 does not go into these equations in here okay um and then we can think furthermore if when alpha what what is the situations when this alpha is higher than one so this means that um, it, it's only possible if your hl is much higher than hg so meaning that the heat transfer coefficients in your solvent is much larger than the heat transfer coefficient in the atmosphere or alternatively if the l1 is much longer than the l2 meaning that the length of the rod immersed into the solvent is much longer than the length of the rod exposed to the atmosphere um, when these equations in here is valid um, meaning that how, how how will you be able to uh, to to basically improve the heat transfer for a given constant temperature difference and a constant rod diameter so the rate of heat transfer can be enhanced by increasing l2 so you can increase this l2 okay or alternatively you can basically try to increase hg how do you increase hg is basically the one of the example is by steering the the air okay so up to now we have covered the modeling level one example okay so i will conclude the, this video here thank you for listening